In this video, we're going to look at the usage of Delta Custo in Azure DevOps. Since every company is different and every project within companies is different, we don't pretend to uh, show you the uh, end all process. We've just show two processes that we implemented in two different pipelines that uh, we suggest as a starting point for using Delta Custo in Azure DevOps. The first one is reverse engineering a dev pipeline. This is the scenario we'd get if the ADAC development database is a database that people edit and create functions, tables, and that type of things. And then you want to push that to staging, production, and other environments. So the first thing you would want to do is reverse engineer the changes that have been happening in your ADX database. And this is what this pipeline does. It uses Delta Custo to compute the delta between a script that you have in Git and your dev database. So it computes a delta, basically compute what you would need to apply to the script that you have in your Git repository to get to the dev database. And it pushes that to a Azure DevOps artifact so that you can consult it and maybe you will amend directly the KQL script. In this case, we just push it to the artifact. Let's look at our Azure Data Explorer environment. First, we have two databases in the same cluster, dev and prod. Of course, with Data Custo, it could be two different clusters for the different environment, but in this case, we have only one cluster. The dev database has two tables, a GitHub event table and a my table. If we look at the script now, the script is below the tutorial Azure DevOps and under the state folder. It's called script KQL. Could be the entire folder, but in this case, only one file. Three commands, create table for the GitHub event table, and another one for the events from live stream. And finally, it creates a function. So we expect a Delta. Let's look at the pipeline running. So we have an Azure DevOps project that we connected to our GitHub repo. To do that yourself, you could by either forking the repo or copying the files and creating a pipeline with the YAML files that we provide. If we look at the pipelines, we have our two pipelines here. We start with reverse engineer and we run pipeline. So we see the job has multiple steps. The first step is to install Delta Custo because Delta Custo CLI isn't installed by default on the Azure DevOps agent. It does uh, create a folder, then it runs Delta Custo and publish the artifact. If we go back to the job itself, we see there's an artifact published and we see we have actually two things in the artifact. We have a delta.kql and we have a complete script of the current ADX development, ADX development database. And we'll see that that's part of the pipeline. If we look at the Delta KQL file, we see this. So compared to the script, we would need to drop the events from live stream database because it is not present in the data database. We need to drop the get payloads, uh, get payload columns function because it isn't present in the database. And we need to create the table, my table, which is present here, but isn't present in the script. So comparing to the script, by position, if we look at the complete script, we'll see that it's a multi folders. And so there's basically two files a GitHub event and a my table file corresponding to the two tables present in the database. So this pipeline does what it's advertising it reverse engineers the dev database. Let's look at the pipeline. So for that, let's go to Azure DevOps here. So under the tutorial Azure DevOps, we can see the reverse engineer folder. And there we got two files, a reverse by a, a rev pipeline.yaml and a rev engineer parameters.yaml. This is a parameter file for Delta Custo. This is the YAML file for Azure DevOps. If we open it, you'll recognize typical Azure DevOps YAML artifacts such as sources, triggers, etc. And we see we define a single stage called Rev Engineer, which has a single job called Delta Custo. It runs on Ubuntu. You could run it on Windows. In this case, we run it on the Ubuntu agent. So the first step we've seen is installing Delta Custo CLI. There are many ways to do it. 
probably in an enterprise scenario, we would download the CLI, store it in an artifact, and work the pipelines from that artifact. Since Delta Custo is an evolving product and the version change relatively often, a convenience that we have is to call a REST API to get the latest version. Because if we call that API, it will return us for the client, the version zero. So if we want to stick to zero, this is the latest version. So we store the latest version in the client version variable. We display it on screen. Then we do a wget, basically a curl, downloading uh, Delta Custo, in this case, the Linux star, uh, but given a, a client version, then we unzip it and we change mode to the Delta Custo binary to make it executable. So that's the first step. Second step, we simply create two folders, uh, the KQL scripts and the KQL scripts complete. This is where we're going to store our artifact. Then we execute uh, Delta Custo. To do that, we need a couple of uh, secrets and sensitive information we pass to Delta Custo, as we'll see. Pass a cluster UI and we package the uh, login credential with a tenant ID, client ID, and secret. And then we invoke Delta Custo uh, using the parameter file that's uh, stored in GitHub. And then we override the cluster URI. We override it twice because there are two jobs, we'll see. And then we override the login. So we see here we use uh, the JSON to package everything together in the login. Once that's executed, we simply publish the artifact to the KQL scripts folder and we call the artifact KQL script. If we look at the parameter file and we see here, we uh, for convenience and for human readability, we do put all the properties for the YAML file, even the ones that we override and we mark them as to be overridden. We could have omitted those, but just for clarity, we left them there. So we see that we target a cluster that will be overridden, the cluster URI, but uh, we target the dev database. So we over we kind of hard code the name of the database there. So we see we have two jobs. We have the job download dev and we have the job delta dev. So the first job download dev is going to basically take all the configuration and push it to a folder path uh, over here. So we define a target, but we don't define a current. When we don't define a current in Delta Custo, by default, the current is empty. So it will compare the dev database with an empty database and will basically reverse engineer the entire thing. The second job defines the current as what's defined in the state folder, where we've seen we have a script defining the database. And the target is the same target. The actions are two actions. We push to the console and we push to a single file called K, uh, Delta KQL, which we looked at. Just to show in our run, if we look at run Delta Custo, we see the comments over here because we push to the console. Now, coming back to the Azure DevOps YAML file, we see that there are a couple of variables that we use. Those are variables from Azure DevOps. We look at the job. And we look at the variables, we can see there are those four variables. Some are marked as secrets, so we don't see anything. Here we can see the uh, URI is clear text. You could have a different pipeline where you actually get the secrets from an Azure Key Vault. Many ways, as, again, this is just a suggestion how to implement it. So this was our reverse engineer dev pipeline. We move to the second pipeline we want to look at. It's called deploy DB pipeline. So in this case, what we want to do is to deploy to staging and then to production. And we want to have a human approval in between. Those are two stages. This is classic Azure DevOps. Each stage is reused. the same YAML that's reused between the two stages. It's called the deploy DB stage. What it does is a delta between where here we put the prod database. We will see that's parameterized actually but basically between a database, which is the current, and the target script, and then we basically push that to the current. So we align our databases to the script that is in the Git repo. Let's look at it in Azure DevOps. We have our push state to DB pipeline. Before we go to the pipeline, let's look at our target script. 
which has two tables, GitHub event and events from live stream, and a function called get payload columns that sits in a folder called helper. And if we look at the staging database, we just have the events from live stream. So let's run the pipeline. If we look at the pipeline, there are three stages, a packaging stage, push to staging stage that pushes the configuration to staging. If we look at our database after the pipeline run, we just do a refresh. We see now it is conformed to the script. So it has the function get payload columns under helper folder, and it has those two tables. Going back to the pipeline, we see that our push to production stage is waiting, and it's waiting for an approval, which I can give here. After the final stage of the pipeline has run its course, we can go to Azure Data Explorer and look at our production. Before it ran, we had one function called myfunk that was not in a folder and just the events from live stream. And after that, we expect to see the same thing that we see in staging. We see that this pipeline really pushes a script and escalates it to different environments so that we have conformity on the schema everywhere. Now let's look at the pipeline. Pipeline is located under the Azure DevOps tutorial. And uh, if we look at deploy DB folder, we have three files. We have the deploy DB pipeline.yaml, that is the entire pipeline. Then we have the deploy DB template, which is the template for staging and prod. We could have multiple environments and still reuse the same template. And we have the parameter file for Delta Custo. Let's look at the pipeline first. So we see here the three stages packaging, staging, and production. In a packaging stage, this is done in line within the pipeline file. We simply package the Azure DevOps folder. Why do we do that? We do that because if between the deployment of staging and production, the scripts in the Git repository would have to change, the Git repository would change, we'd still want to push what we push to staging to production. So this is the way that we achieve that. The classic way to do that in Azure DevOps is to publish an artifact local to the pipeline and reuse this artifact along the way so that you ensure that you always deploy the same package along the way. After that, in staging stage, we run the deploy DB template. We pass it a parameter, the environment name, staging. Similarly, in the production stage, we call the same template passing environment prod. Let's look at the template. We, see the, we declare parameter env at the beginning. And similarly to the other pipeline, we look the reverse engineering pipeline. We first download the Delta Custo CLI, and then we execute it. Let's look at the parameter file. So in this case, we have the current, that's a cluster UI, and the database are both overridden since the database will change from staging to prod as we move along the environments. The target is the state folder with scripts, and we push to current, and we also push to the console. Similarly, looking at the pipeline, this pipeline needs the variables. The pipeline requires a couple of variables to run properly. Uh, those are basically secrets. As we mentioned, those could come from Azure Key Vault or elsewhere. In this case, we made it simple for the tutorial. So that's what we wanted to show. The two pipelines, of course, variations are infinite. You could run Delta Custos in different ways to adapt to your process, but those are two suggestions to get you started. Hope that helps. If there is anything, uh, please leave the comments in the comment section.